Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the Pranzata podcast. This is your host, Andrea Pranzatelli. This is episode number 62 on this podcast series on YouTube. It has been roughly two months since I've done a podcast, so I'm really excited to be back with it today. Um, I don't want to get into the details of why I took off. Long story short, I had been dealing with a lot of personal stuff, mental stuff, financial stuff. I'm not one who likes to make excuses, so I don't think that's an excuse why I should have taken you know, two months or so to not film my podcast. But regardless, we are back and we're back into it. Um, I had a guest booked, but he, the day we were supposed to record, he, it was a comedian from New Jersey. His name is Steve. He's a really funny stand up from New Jersey. He ended up having a scooter accident. He fell off his scooter um, and had to get emergency x-rays that day. So he's going to be coming this week instead. So I'm going to be doing like an impromptu solo session because I was, you know, like I said, really excited to get back into the rhythm of everything. So I don't want to let that um, excuse me, but he'll be on this Thursday. We're going to record him and we can roast him for his ridiculous accident and, um, you know, talk about that on the podcast. So for today, since it's solo, I took some Q and a on my Instagram because I wanted, uh, something to talk about. I didn't know what to talk about. It's just been so long that I was like, all right, maybe you guys can tell me what you want me to say sort of thing. So I picked five questions. I just want to say first in advance that if you asked me a question and I don't use it today because I got about roughly 10 questions and I'm only going to be using five. Um, I'm going to be saving those questions to share with my guest this Thursday, you know, the comedian who had the scooter accident. So just stay tuned. Don't feel like you didn't ask a good question. It was just that I didn't think I would have enough time to get through 10 questions because I tend to ramble on when I answer these questions. So I was like, let's do five solo today. And then this Thursday, I'll share some of those questions with my guests in particular, in particularly the ones that are related to comedy. Okay, so here we go. Let's get right into it. First question is from my good friend, Sean McCracken. He is a hilarious stand-up from New Jersey, one of my favorites in the New Jersey scene, truly. He has a very funny podcast called The Hunk Yard, which <laughs> I think is a great name, and I think it's such a funny name. And he was he was profoundly hurt when I um, made fun of the name because he was like, hey, is it funny because I'm not really a hunk, which <laughs> um, I think that's funny. Um, okay. So, uh, oh yeah, check out The Hunk Yard if you haven't. It's a great podcast. It's on Spotify and YouTube. So, Sean McCracken asks me, and I love this question, which is why I put it first, because it was the question that I truly had to put the most thought into. Um, and it was the question that I think says a lot about me as a human being, <laughs> probably. Um, so, his question is, would you fi- uh, fuck, marry, or kill? And the three people are... Joe Rogan, Lex Friedman, and Jason Momoa. Let me repeat that again. Fuck, Mary, kill. Joe Rogan, Lex Friedman, or Jason Momoa? I think this was a great question for him to ask for multiple reasons. First of all, he knows I love Joe Rogan and I love Lex Friedman. And he also probably knows that Jason Momoa is super hot. So the one that I was going to kill was really easy for me to answer. First of all, let me get my iced coffee. It looks really good. Hold on. Okay. The person I would kill, very easy to answer for me, would be Jason Momoa. While he, that's probably a surprise for most people because he definitely is the most attractive one on this list. Um, The reason I would kill him is because I didn't even know who he was before I researched him to answer this question. And I'm not even sure if I still know who he is. I think he is a character on Game of Thrones. First of all, I didn't watch Game of Thrones. I don't care to watch it. I never got into it. So for me, that was an easy answer. So I would kill him because I don't care about him. I have no attachment to him whatsoever. He's hot. So first of all, when I when I was saying in the, in the um, beginning, I feel like this says a lot about me as a person. So I feel like right off the bat, it says that who I choose to marry or fuck doesn't have anything to do with the way they look, which I think is interesting. Um, Because if I only knew each one of these people by their looks alone and I knew nothing about him, I would think he was the most fuckable one. But because I have an attachment to 
Joe Rogan and Lex Friedman both, uh, I would easily kill that guy. So that said something about me, I felt, uh, which I thought was interesting. Now, what do we have left? We have who would you fuck and who would you marry between Joe Rogan and Lex Friedman? That was really hard for me to answer. And I actually had to genuinely put a lot of thought into it. Um, and I think, again, this is going to speak a lot about my character. It's going to say, well, what's more important to me? Somebody's personality or money when choosing to marry or fuck, you know? So after some heavy thought into this, I decided I would marry Joe Rogan and fuck Lex Friedman. Now, let me break this down. The interesting thing about this is that I don't find I don't find Joe Rogan sexually attractive to me I love him he's you know my biggest inspiration as far as podcasters go not com- I mean no offense but not comedy he's 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 not my favorite stand-up comedian that's not why he's a big inspiration to me but as a podcaster he's probably my biggest inspiration and Lex Friedman might be number two on that list of um, podcaster inspirations along with Whitney Cummings. Um, she's also a big podcast inspiration for me. Um, but I don't have any sexual attraction towards Joe Rogan. I never looked up to him as, um, somebody that I thought was hot or anything like that. Not that he's not an attractive guy. I don't think he's an unattractive guy either. It's just that I never really saw him that way. I think when he was younger, I saw some pictures of him in his heyday, um, when he had a good head of hair and you know that type of thing he was a very attractive man um but personally i'm not i'm actually not into the i've never really been into a very muscular guys and he he has like a very big bone structure he's got like a big muscular face um and like you know obviously he works out so he has a big muscular body and even though i work out and i like having muscle on my body i've never really been much into muscular men so i just find that interesting if you look at my track record of um like the past four or five boyfriends i've had they've always been rather skinny um so but with that being said i would choose to marry joe rogan over lex friedman and the funny, <laughs> the funny thing is, I feel like Lex Friedman and I, as people, would get along really well. Like, I feel like he and I would have a good relationship. Like, I feel like we're both similar. Like, we have similar personalities, like, that we're hardworking and we kind of romanticize things and ask a lot of questions and that type of thing. So even though I feel like my marriage with... Lex Friedman might be more fulfilling like within our actual relationship it might be more fulfilling um I still would choose to marry Joe Rogan because I feel like overall my life would probably be very fulfilling and I think that might say a negative thing about me as a person because I'm choosing like the lifestyle and what this person has to offer to me for my life over the actual relationship, which I I think that that might not be a good thing, but I don't know. Maybe a lot of people function that way, but I feel like if I married Joe Rogan um, over Lex Friedman, not that we wouldn't have a good relationship because I actually think I would get along with him very well also, but I think that I would just get to meet so many amazing people all the time. Like I would be in just all these cool environments um i would get to meet every anybody i've ever wanted to meet because he has so many people on his podcast i would um have all my student loan debt paid not that uh lex friedman couldn't pay it too but i just feel like it would be even easier for joe rogan to pay it because he um has a higher net worth so like yeah like i said i feel like this the only good thing i found out about myself during this is that i don't choose looks over personality but I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing about my character that I would choose financial stability and overall lifestyle for who I marry as opposed to the actual relationship. I'm not sure if that's a good thing. Um, Lex Friedman, I find him very sexually attractive. So the only thing is I can't picture Lex Friedman being good in bed because there's sort of a rumor going around, you know, in the podcast and comedy scene. They're like, is that guy a virgin? Like if you, you could literally Google it, is Lex Friedman a virgin? So many people have asked that question because he, he definitely has a virgin like 
essence about him. He's just got this like very sweet and innocent type of essence to him. He's very attractive. Um, but because of that, I'm not sure if he'd be great in bed, but I could almost like fetish. <laughs> I could almost like see myself feti- fetish, fetish, fetishizing that. I don't know if that's the right word. I could almost seeing, a, I could almost see myself making that a fetish because it's like the power dynamic of this person being innocent and one person having more sexual experience. I, I, I like, I like it either way. I like it when the, I like it when the man has more experience and the woman is more innocent, but I also like it the other way around when the man is more innocent and the woman has more experience. So even though like he might not be great in bed, I could see myself sort of being into that. Um, so anyways, I I told you I could ramble on, but that's my answer. I would kill Jason Momoa. I would marry Joe Rogan and I would fuck Lex Friedman. Okay. Next question. My friend Arson, the poet, amazing poet. She has her own book published. She was on my podcast. Um, check her out on Instagram, Arson, the poet. I'll include, by the way, anyone who I call out, I'll include their information in the, uh, the bio below if you want to check them out. So Arson the Poet asks me, and I like this question, if money was unlimited, what would you want out of life? I'm going to repeat the question. If money was unlimited, what would you want out of life? Um, I've already kind of thought about this in the past, but so it was easy for me to answer. For one, I would pay all of my debt, my student loan debt and everything else like that. And I would also pay all the debts of I'm not going to name names, but certain people in my family, um, you know, certain people that I'm very close with in my family that I feel like have struggled financially, but are very good people and don't deserve it, you know? So I would definitely pay my debts and fa- some family members debts off, um, to try to help them. That would be the first thing I would do as far as what would I do with that money in the bigger picture? It's always been a dream. I don't think it's okay. I don't think it's possible for every, I don't think it's possible for everybody to contribute to every single type of cause. So I can't see myself donating to everything in the world. Like there, I feel like there's only so much, even if you had endless, even if you had an unlimited amount of money, you don't have an unlimited amount of energy in your body. So there's really only so much you can get yourself into or get yourself involved with. So I feel like for me personally, I would choose a cause. I would pick a cause and stick with it. And I feel like the two biggest causes for me, um, that I would want to donate to or, or contribute to in some type of way would be one student loan debt, um, and two cats. So, um, I think I would, I don't really even know how I would go about doing it, but I would somehow donate, um, to some type of organization to try to cancel student loan debt, or maybe I would, uh, have some type of charity for like, you know, I would maybe start some type of my own organization where certain people send in their stories about um, how they got in student loan debt and how it's been affecting them. And maybe, you know, certain people I would pay off their student loan debt. You know, I would I would just somehow I don't even know how, but I would find a way to contribute towards that cause. And then the second thing I would do is I love cats so much. And I obviously I have cats of my own. Um, I, there's a lot of stray cats in the neighborhood that I live in. So I'm always taking care of them. There's a lot of stray cats in the world, especially in New Jersey and all over the place. And a lot of them, there's not enough homes for those cats. So a lot of them end up, you know, they don't get the health care that they need and they end up, uh, you know, getting sick and dying, uh, you know, homeless and they don't, they have to struggle through the winters and hurricanes and stuff like that. So I think I would uh, start some type of, I would probably start some type of chain of cat cafes all over the country or cat shelters um, to take care of cats. You know what I mean? That would probably be, because it's something I'm passionate about. Because like I said, again, you can't, one person can't save the entire world, you know, but um, as long as you contribute towards the things that really mean something to you, you're more likely to make a difference in those areas because it really means something to you and you'll kind of know, I think you'll have more knowledge of what to do. So that was my long answer. Short answer, uh, I would spend money on saving cats and I would spend money on trying my best to save people 
with student loan debt and contribute towards the greater cause of trying to cancel student loan debt in whatever way I could. The shallow part of that answer, if money was unlimited, I would definitely put some, uh, I would put some money into my physical appearance. That is the shallow part of the answer. But if the money is unlimited, I'm not going to lie. There's a couple things I would do. I don't think I would want to be one of those like, you know, Instagram chicks or YouTube chicks that look. I feel like I feel like when you put too much work into it, all the women start looking exactly the same. Like they have the lip injections and they have the fake lashes. And I think it starts to look fucking ridiculous. So I wouldn't put that much work into it. Um, because I feel like then everybody starts looking exactly the same and it's, I don't want to contribute to that cause sort of thing, but there are just, there are certain things I would do for myself that would make me feel better, um, as a person that I currently don't have the money to do right now. I, I would, I would just want to look like a fresher, cleaner version of myself. Like I don't want to change my face or get like these massive lip injections or anything. Um, I don't even think I would want breast implants. I've thought about it before, but I'm like, I don't want to look different. I just want to look like a better, cleaner version of myself or like a younger version of myself. So I would probably get Botox because um, you probably can't notice any wrinkles right now because that's the that's the magic of good lighting when I do this podcast. But I, I feel always very insecure about aging and, and, um, that type of thing. So I would probably get some Botox, um, or like fillers on the parts that they can't. Cause I, I don't know if anybody knows this, but you know, those like wrinkles that you get here, laugh lines or whatever that are right here. Mine are pretty prominent. You just can't really tell now because of the lighting. Um, apparently you can't get Botox on those because what Botox does is it freezes the muscles and you just won't be able to smile like I would just which I actually never smile anyways um but so I guess it wouldn't really be that big of a deal but they they only you can't get Botox on these wrinkles right here you can only get filler so I if I had unlimited money I would get filler on these things and I would get Botox on those and on those um that would be the first thing I would do with the unlimited money Aside from the actual good things like the charity things. Um, other appearance things. Probably I might get something done to my hair. Like um, again, I want to look like a brunette. I don't want to go blonde or anything like that. But I might do some like subtle highlights or something. Like um, I really like purple. I, I used to have um, I used to have my whole head dyed purple. But that was a little too much for me. And I that's why I ended up shaving my head and like growing my hair from scratch. Because... Having all that bleach on my hair totally fucked up the curl and the wave, which I like. I like, I actually really like my natural uh, wavy hair. So I think I would do something to my hair where it was like just very subtle, like purple highlights as opposed to my whole head. That way, you know, I still maintain the integrity of my waves and, you know, my natural like thick hair, uh, but also having a little something. So again, that's something I, I could get close to affording right now but that shit's expensive getting those highlights and going to a place that will actually do it well it, it could be like easily three to four hundred dollars and then you have to maintain it after that like you have to keep getting it done or it starts to turn like orange and you know shit like that so okay botox that i think the only other things i might get done would be um I have pretty thick brows, but I have I still have to get like a pencil in them. I still have to pencil them to to like fill out certain spots that look kind of bald over years of plucking them and stuff like that from when when really thin eyebrows were popular in the 90s. So luckily, like right now, thick eyebrows are more trendy. Luckily, I already have pretty naturally thick eyebrows. But like I said, there's just some bald spots over, you know, those plucking that I did, you know, in the 90s. And um I think I might get that, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I, not threading. I don't remember what it's called, but I, you guys know what I'm talking about. When you get that like cosmetic eyebrow fill and stuff. Um, I, th I heard before that apparently it doesn't always work for people. If you have greasy skin, it won't stay on very long and it may not be worth it. And I have a weird feeling that... I might be one of those people who has that problem because I tend to have like oily, you know, greasy skin. So I feel like I w might get it done and then it would just come off anyways. But it would be worth a shot to see if it worked for me because it would be nice to like not have to pencil in my eyebrows. Um, and then the last thing I would probably do appearance wise, maybe, I'm not sure. I think I would just try it once. 
I think I would try to get um, lash extensions, but the very subtle ones. I can't stand the crazy ones. I think they look ridiculous. Um, but I would get the subtle ones, like just really, you know, because I think it would be nice to just wake up and not do any makeup. Like my eyebrows are done. My my uh lashes are already long and my skin is like perfectly tight so I just like wake up and go you know what I mean like I like my natural hair you know um so I think I would do those things to my appearance I'm not gonna lie um but I wouldn't go nuts like I'm not gonna get surgeries and stuff like that so I would do that um I think that's really it I I think I've covered everything like paying off the debts of myself and people I care about contributing to charity um taking care of some beauty things that I've always dreamed of taking care of. I just don't have the money to do. And then that's really it. And then besides that, just travel and eat well, you know, just enjoy my life, you know, record music, everything like that. There's, just, there is a lot I would, that would free up my life if I had unlimited money, you know, but I could go on for hours about that. So I kind of named the things that were probably the top things, you know? Um, okay. Next. Question number three. I only have five questions. So here's question number three. The next question is from Patrick Haggerty Comedy. He is a stand-up comedian from New York City. He performs in New York and New Jersey. He is a big part of the comedy fight club thing that I per uh, participate in where I do roast battles. He is usually on that team, whether he's doing the roasting or doing the judging he's usually always at those shows he he performs at them does like stand-up acts in the middle i'll also include his information below patrick asks me what do you like about chess <laughs> so the reason he asks this is because i just recently got into chess disclaimer i am terrible at it i am not good at it so don't think i'm this smart bitch that i'm really good at chess i'm not i'm really bad at it um but I'm really into it regardless. I've only been playing for about a month right now. Um, I've been playing online with some of my friends. I've been playing with Sean McCracken, uh, the person that I, I mentioned in the beginning, the one who asked me to fuck, marry, or kill, you know, question. He is really good at it. He has clobbered me every single time. Um, I've been, you know, playing with some random people on chess.com along with him. I've made some random internet friends from it which I think is fun. Like I, I kind of made um, internet friends with this one person from LA who's a music producer. So it's been a lot of fun. Um, but me and, my, and also me and my boyfriend play and I've only beaten him one time, but he's, he's not like a master the way Sean McCracken is, but he's very, you know, he's good. Um, but to answer your question, why am I into it? What do I like about it? Um, as I was mentioning in the beginning of the podcast, I took a hiatus from podcasting because I I was dealing with some personal personal issues, and a lot of those issues were related to my mental health and um, you know some mental stuff that I was going through. And I personally found that chess helped me deal with a lot of the mental struggles I was going through because a lot of my um, mental struggles are related to anxiety issues I don't really I think one day I might talk in more detail about like my mental health problems um and what exactly I go through but I'm not sure if I feel open to talking about it at this moment so I'm not going to get in crazy detail but long story short I deal with a lot of anxiety related issues I guess you could say I overthink things and it gets me into a lot of trouble um and what I found was that chess was a healthy way to deal with overthinking because you know, rather than overthinking about my stupid life, I can overthink about how to keep the king safe. You know what I mean? It's like, well, instead of keeping myself safe and, you know, being afraid of for my life, I can be afraid for the king's life. So it was just kind of a way to distract myself and to channel that anxiety into something completely different. Um, so I, it's been kind of a healthy coping mechanism for me. And it's been something I've been getting really into. I've been reading about it. I've been playing every single day. Um, I'm, I think I'm getting better. Like, I think I could say that, but I'm still by no means good at it, you know, but I, I actually have faith that I will be good. Also, I want to say not only did it help me deal with mental health related issues, but it also, it's interesting when I first started playing piano and taking piano very seriously and getting good at piano 
what I learned was that in order to get better at piano, I had to then conquer certain things that were holding me back in my life that had nothing to do piano. I found nothing to do with piano. I had found that those same things that were holding me back from my real life were also holding me back from being a good pianist. For example, I remember at the time when I started, you know, getting into piano in my young to mid 20s, I remember I was somebody who held a lot of body tension. Um, again, you know, going back to like the mental stuff, I'm I'm a lot better today than I was then. I could say that. Um, and back then, I I remember I had such severe anxiety and social anxiety issues that I would like always walk around with like tense shoulders and like just I had so much tension in my body every day, you know, um, which was wasn't a good thing. It was I I had developed chronic pain and like chronic back pain, and I'm almost positive it was. Um, you know, my mind related to my body, you know, that mind body connection. And I remember I had developed a piano injury because of this tension in my body. And the only way to get through to heal from that piano injury and to start becoming a better pianist was literally to start letting go of that tension I was holding in my body. Um, because the piano doesn't lie. Like, the electric piano can lie, but the acoustic piano does not lie. And I was studying, you know, music in college at the time. Um, if you have tension in your body, that piano will sound ugly, you know? And in, in an electric piano, that's not necessarily the case because no matter which way you touch it, it's electric. It's going to come out the same. But the, that's what's beautiful at, about the acoustic piano. It, 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 whatever you're feeling comes out of that thing and and there's no you can't hide it there's no lying about it it's very exposing and because I was holding so much tension um the the music I was playing just sounded very tense and it didn't sound beautiful so in order to get through that hump in my life I had to release a lot of tension in my body you know and I'm a lot I'm so much better of a piano player today because of that, you know, going through that. Now, chess, I'm starting to notice that a lot of the issues that hold me back in my life today are what are what uh, is what is holding me back from being a better chess, uh, better chess player. So, for example, I don't know if I said that right. I, I think what I meant to say was what's holding me back in my real life is what's holding me back in chess, just like the the piano example. Um one thing that I struggle with in my real life is that I'm very impatient. <laughs> I'm very impatient. I don't, um, I act really quickly and I don't really think about things, um, in my life. Like I kind of just want to get to the next thing, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I move very quickly and I get angry and I get irritable if I don't get things quickly. And you can't do that in chess because, and I've made a lot of dumb mistakes be because of that. Um, because I would see an opportunity and I'd be like, I'm going to do this. Like, and yeah, what happens is you really need to, unless you're a master chess player and you're somebody who is a genius and you can actually see everything that quickly, like you can see the whole board and all the different possibilities that quickly. That's a different story. But as a new chess player, you have to stop and think and you have to really take your time to observe everything around you. So it forces you, if you want to be good at this, it forces you to focus. You have to focus if you want to do this. You know, it le you know, like I said, unless you're a genius and you can see the big picture that quickly. Um, if you're not a genius and you know, you're just a regular idiot like me, you have to, um, you have to focus, you know, and I, I struggle to focus. I I'm very impatient and I move too quickly. And, um, it's kind of training me and teaching me the art of focusing, which is why one of the big reasons why I like it. Also, the other element is that I don't, in my real life, I don't always see the big picture of things. And same thing, same thing on the chessboard. You have to think long term about things on the chessboard. You can't just see what's right in front of you. And I have that mistake. Like sometimes on the chessboard, there'll be a little. And if you don't play chess, it might be confusing to understand. But I feel like a lot of people have at least played chess once. So you can kind of follow what I'm saying. There could be something going on right in front of you that you could be dealing with on, on the, uh, the chessboard. And you could be really engrossed in how do I, you know, how do I how do I get this horse to get this piece or this pawn or whatever, like right here in this corner of the board. But meanwhile, 
if you're not looking at the entire board while you're doing all this little shit here, there could be a whole nother thing going on or a whole nother plan from your opponent. And I make that mistake all the time where I don't stop and look at the big picture. And that is something I struggle with in my real life too. A lot of times I just sort of, I try to find the solution and I think it relates to impatience, but I try to find the solution for what's right in front of my face without really thinking like, long term about it like okay this might be a good decision right now but uh, let's think you know let's think about this four moves ahead let's think about this a few moves ahead it it will this really benefit me in the long term yes this might be a short-term solution but in the big picture of things is this going to help me get to where I need to go at the end of my life and that's something I struggle with in my real life and I and you know prior to starting chess I had realized that I started realizing that this year um, in particular with my financial stress that I deal with, I, I, I try to, I try to figure out how to get out. Like I haven't always made, um, the, the past few years, I haven't always made, um, plans to get out of my financial situation that were long-term financial plans. You know, um, for example, like the door dashing that I did, that was like a very good short-term solution because it's like, fuck, I need money. This is a really easy way to get money. But then what's the long-term aspect of this? It's like, well, the long-term aspect of this is now you are putting miles on your car. And at the end of this, you're going to have to pay the taxes back anyway. So it's like, it's like a dumb move. It's like a very instantaneous, like, fuck, I need money right now. Let me just get the money right now. And by the way, I still, I don't, I don't hate on door dashing. I actually think it's still a good solution part-time like there could be situations where that worked but it's not a long-term solution it's a very short-term solution so I just, just that's just one example I feel like in my life I haven't really made long-term plans to try to make money and now I'm actually trying to think about that stuff I'm like okay I need to build a website I need to build a website to promote the band I'm in or the couple bands I'm in and th those sort of things like those are the sort of things I'm really thinking about now and it's been very apparent on the chessboard how stupid I could be with those things um, because on the chessboard I just act too quickly and I don't look at the big picture. So I don't know. I think chess is amazing. I really recommend everybody learns how to play it because it'll really show you a lot about your character and who you are as a person, you know? Okay. Two more questions to go. Next question. This is from my friend Hannah Likes You. She has been my friend... Uh, I, I don't want to say since middle school because we went on a long, you know, break of not talking, but she was my friend in middle school and we just recently reconnected on the internet, interesting enough. Um, so she asks me, what is your favorite preparation of potato? And the, the reason she's asking me this is because in sixth grade, I want to say it was like either, I think it was sixth grade. In sixth grade, her and I had this brilliant idea of, throwing a potato party we're like let's throw a party where the whole thing is based on potatoes and everybody comes and brings like a different style of potato potato chips mashed potatoes potato this or whatever and <laughs> we we uh, first of all the party was at my house and keep in mind we were in sixth grade so everybody at the party was like 12 years old you know maybe 13 11 12 13 like that age um and we were so into this party and I lived in a small condo, a very small condo at the time with my dad and we got way too crazy and we ended up handing flyers around the entire school and somehow this party got to everybody. Like this party got to the whole fucking school and before you know it, there was like like 112 year old kids in my condo that I live with. And mind you, we were young, so it wasn't un unsupervised. Um, it, my dad was there watching the whole thing. And he was he had like a nasty look on his face because I think he was nervous that we were going to like do drugs and have sex or whatever. And we, we actually, that's not even really what it was. It was like, because we were 12. Like, it, I, I feel like nowadays that might be like something that 12 year olds would do, you know, especially because of the internet and pornography and stuff. They're probably just exposed to sex at such a young age. But at this age, we really just wanted to have like the potato party, I feel. Um, I mean, I can't speak for all the kids. I'm sure maybe some of the other kids had different ideas uh, of what they wanted to do. Like maybe they wanted to come get high or something. I don't know. But 
my dad was so pissed that he just kicked everybody out. He was like, that's it. He's like, I can't have all these kids in my house and I can't choose who gets to come. So you're all out. Like he, my dad just kicked everybody out. And it was just this whole disaster of like what started as a fun party then became like there was like 112 year old kids standing outside of my house waiting for their parents to pick them up um so she asked me this question as like a joke like what kind of potato do you like um but to honestly answer the question fucking mashed potatoes bitch i love mashed potatoes i i i just learned how to make them recently um because i used to try to make them like uh, just by using my intuition and I would make them completely wrong. Like I finally looked up how you're supposed to actually make them. And I was like, wow, everything I did was totally wrong. Cause I'm a, I'm one of those chefs who likes to just wing it. I don't like to look things up. Um, which might again, speak for my impatience, you know? Um, but I finally looked up how to make them and I learned how to make them correctly. Holy shit. If you can make me a good mashed potato, I love you. Like, I love mashed potatoes. They're fucking amazing. I actually want them right now, now that we're talking about it. So there's no long, complicated answer for this. The answer is just mashed potatoes. Um, but they have to be good and they have to have good quality butter. They have to have the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The grass fed, um, Irish butter is my favorite. Okay. Last question. This question is from a fantastic drummer. His name is James Applegate. He was also on my podcast. He truly is the most talented drummer I've ever met in real life. That's my friend. Um, he went to Berkeley. He is also a great, you know, teacher. So he, he teaches lessons by the way online. So if there's any drummers listening who want to improve their skills, I will also include his information down below. James drums a lot is his Instagram handle. Um, he asks me, and this is my last question, by the way, he asks me, what are some upcoming projects and gigs you have coming up? Good question. So I have some projects coming up for both music and comedy that I'm excited about. Um, so I don't know which order to say this in. Okay, I'll say the music one first. So one, I just got accepted into a band as an official band member. I had been filling in as the keyboard player for this band. They're called the Rusty Monks. They are a funk band in New Jersey slash New York area. Like they're in New Jersey, but they're like towards New York City. Um, I at first I was a little skeptical about joining the band because I was worried that um, oh I'll say this too I forgot to say this in the beginning life update which will help answer this question um, I officially have a place that I'm going to be moving now I had taken you guys on a journey with me <laughs> the past two years trying to figure out where I was going to move because you know the financial stuff I didn't have the money if I had enough money in my pocket I would have literally picked up and went to Austin Texas on the spot like because that's how impulsive I am um which again comes with that impatient part, which which sometimes that could be a good thing. Sometimes being an impulsive person could actually work out for you because you end up doing crazy risky things that not everybody would have the guts to do. Um, but had I had enough money in my pocket, I I would have been living in Austin, Texas already. Didn't have enough money in my pocket at the time, at the time that I wanted to move. So um, I went on this journey of like... Um, do I move to Austin, Texas? Do I move to Philadelphia? Do I move to New York City? Do I move somewhere completely different? I didn't know. So after years of thinking about things, um, kind of what ended up happening was I, my life, because I didn't, I had so much time that I, I didn't have the money to move. I sort of settled into the life I have now. Um, you know, I ended up getting into a relationship that, you know, started, it started out as something that wasn't, we didn't think it was going to be like a serious relationship. It started out as like, you know, friends with benefits type of thing. Sorry to my boyfriend for calling it out on the, you know, on the internet. But in the very beginning, I was like moving very slowly. Cause I was like, I want to think about where I'm going to move. I don't want to like get too serious. But over time, you know, we ended up falling in love and we ended up getting serious with each other. Um, and sort of my life just kind of fell into place in the process. Like I ended up getting involved with this rusty monks band and I ended up getting involved in this cover band with friends in Philadelphia. So I am now officially moving in to my boyfriend's house right now, which is in New Jersey. It's in South Jersey, like maybe 20 ish minutes from Philadelphia. Um, so the plan is we're going to be living here together for a year. And then when this year lease is over, we're going to be, he, well, not me, I, I don't have the money. He's going to be buying a house in, um, 
close to Philly, still New Jersey, most likely, but like much closer to Philly, like maybe a like 10, 10 or 15 minute drive as opposed to a 20 minute drive. Um, and that's where I am now. And the whole reason I just brought that up, uh, not to get on a side tangent, is because I, th- I forgot to bring it up in the beginning, but I wanted to tell you guys that, um, that I finally have a life plan here with all that. And then t- why does this apply to my question? The reason is because um, I had been asked to be part of this funk band. Um, and, you know, I was a very good fit for the band, but I was afraid to join it because I have some other side projects going on and I'm going to be living closer to Philly. So I was worried about getting too involved with somebody closer to New York when I'm living closer to Philly. Um, but I ended up deciding to join the band because I really just love the band. I, I love it. Like I love the set list. I love the music. We get steady, pretty steady gigs, especially in the summer, maybe in the winter, a little bit less. Um, but honestly, all that is a good for, fit for me because I have some other projects going on on the side um, that, are more successful in the winter it seems like the the cover band I'm in we do we last year we did a lot more in the winter than the summer so um I'm like you know what this band is a good fit for me so what we have a gig if I have to drive an hour for a gig to the New York City area or like North Jer- or yeah North Jersey area what is that an hour and 15 minutes from the Philly area that's not that much different if I had like a gig an hour away no matter where I lived so I'm like you know what I'm gonna be part of this band So I am now an official member. I am the keyword player for Rusty Monks. Very excited about it. Such a good funk band. So I'll start like posting more videos and stuff about that. Um, That's the first opportunity uh, project coming up is that. And um, by the way, we plan to right now we have a goal to get on the Tiny Desk series. We're going to be doing some recordings and I'm going to be for the first time having my uh keyboard player recorded on an album on spotify there's just like so many cool things going on with this band i'm very excited about it um what else is coming up oh this one is particularly exciting as well so for those of you who have been following me on here i've been doing roast battles um crazy thing i i got asked to do it online from some you know the guy who runs the show honestly barely even know the guy I just met him a few times in stand-up but he basically reached out to me and was like hey you have a very impressive um like resume from what I see on Instagram like you have a big following you have a podcast you know you get booked you know shows um would you like to be part of this roast battle thing? And, or, you know, roast battle, by the way, they're called Comedy Fight Club New York City. I'm also going to include their information below. They're actually doing really fucking well. Like they have a big following. They have a Patreon. They're getting bigger and bigger. <coughs> so I'm even more excited to be a member of their team and to be helping them out with their shows and everything. It just goes to show that collaboration really brings things further um but so randomly got asked to do that I had no idea that I would actually be I think pretty good at it because so far I've done five battles with them the very first battle I did was with an amazing with Sean McCracken actually he amazingly funny really good at roasting um I managed to keep up with him well enough that I tied with him and then I lost in the overtime joke. So it was very neck and neck for the five for, we had to like do five jokes back and forth. It was very neck and neck and the audience couldn't decide what to do. So we went into overtime and then I ended up losing in overtime. So that was my first battle. Then I did four more battles and I won all of those. So percentage wise, I've won 80% of the battles I participated in, I think, right? Is that that how that math works? Um, Yeah, right? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 80%. Um, I think it's luck, to be honest. I I do think there may have been actually two battles that I genuinely felt like my skills were good. Um, But I think in two other situations, the opponent just didn't do it no offense but the opponent just didn't have strong jokes so I won just because I was better than them but doesn't mean that my skills were that great so I think it's totally a streak of wild luck that what's coming up the the project is that I've been asked to compete for the title of the king of New Jersey 
Um, or I guess in my case, if I win, it'll be the queen of New Jersey. So I guess every year, I don't know if it's once a year or twice a year. I think it's once a year. They do this thing where they have a competition. They pick eight of the best um, roast battle, you know, contestants and they have them compete for who would be considered the best roaster in New Jersey. So I feel I'm like, how the fuck did I get chosen for this? And I, I really think it's, you know, it's because I've had a high percentage rate of success doing it. But like, like I said, I don't really think that speaks for my skills. I think that was just mostly luck, a little bit of skill, but mostly luck. So now this Wednesday, I'm actually going to post that probably tonight on my Instagram. It would really mean a lot to me if people would come out and support me for that. Even if I lose just to see familiar faces there would really mean a lot to me because this is a big deal for me. I never imagined being in invited to do something like this so this literally this wednesday september uh i think it's the seventh but whatever wednesday that is it's definitely on a wednesday in moore's no no not morristown i think it's it's near morristown let's just say that but i'll post the exact address in my um instagram bio so i have a link to my instagram bio below so literally if you check um i'm gonna upload this at asap it'll be before the roast battle if if somebody would like to come out and support me for that I'd really appreciate that. So I'm going to be competing this Wednesday, September 7th for the possible queen of New Jersey roast battlers. So that is really exciting for me. Um, it's blo- it, like I said, it just blows my mind. I don't know how, how that happened. I really think it's mostly luck. Um, anything else coming up project or gig wise? Um, I think that's pretty much it. The band I just got invited in the roast battle competition this Wednesday, um last year again I had been involved in this cover band that I had put together with a couple good friends um in particular Matt Kerner who is an amazing you know musician just got married he is a great guitar player songwriter he's in a band called Feeney I will also include that below if you guys want to check that out he's in a great band from New Jersey called Feeney um he and I last year had co-started a band that we called Smoke Hon- Smoked Honey. It's a cover band from New Jersey. We had gotten some pretty decent gigs, and then we kind of fell off the map because we all got busy during the summer. But we're going to be kick, you know, kicking that back into gear. I've been working on editing this video for us so we can promote ourselves and get more gig opportunities, and we have a rehearsal coming up. So that's, that's another project coming up that I'm really excited to get involved with. Um, I can't – I'm trying to think, is there anything like – notable coming up i really think that those are the i would think those are the three things that really stick out in my mind right now um being a member of of rusty monks um getting back together with smoked honey and kicking that back into gear and the roast battle competition that's really it so yeah some exciting stuff and like i said the move coming up i'll be moving into my boyfriend's house in south jersey uh november 1st so I'll be trapped in my old apartment in central Jersey for two more months. And then the time's just flying right by. So it's going to go by really quickly. Um, so yeah, I've got a lot going on right now. And, uh, and I guess I should include this in the, in, in the answer too. I'm getting back to podcasting. So I don't want to make excuses anymore. That was way too long for me to not be podcasting, you know, to deal with life issues and stuff like that. But no more excuses. We're back. I That's why I was like, I don't care if my guest fell off a scooter. I have to do a solo podcast no matter what happens. Um, so this week, it's just me. Next week, you guys are going to see my guest, Stephen, the comedian from New Jersey. And we're going to ask him more about his, you know, accident and what the fuck happened. Um, and that's really it. Those are the questions I have for today. Just to reiterate, if you had asked me a question and yours wasn't included here, I am going, I promise I will be saving that for the guest and I'm going to share it with him because look, it took me almost an hour to answer these five questions. There would have been no way I could have answered all 10 questions um, in a decent amount of time. So I'll be saving those for my guests and we're going to be answering them together. So that should be a lot of fun. Um, that's going to be it for today. Prans out a podcast episode number 62. If you're into this podcast, um and you enjoyed yourself don't forget to hit like don't forget to subscribe don't forget to share all the stuff that i'm supposed to stay say as a youtuber to get attention or success or a following on here all the things that i'm supposed to say do those things um comment i actually like comments that's something that i genuinely i don't feel like i just have to say i want to hear your comments um that's it prance out a podcast 
I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. Have a good day. Bye.